All right, so Tony Miles, this time playing d4 instead of c4. d5, and we have a queen's gambit. Wow. e6, g3, c6. Bishop g2. And of course the Catalan opening. Dylan here. Knight to F six. Knight to F three. Knight B D seven. Castle King side. Bishop E seven. Queen C2, castles, pawn B3, pawn B6, rook D1, bishop B7, now my first uh, USCF victory was against a Catalan opening, I was black. And I thought it was funny because the player of the Catalan was named Catalano. Catalan with an O at the end. <laughs> no. No, there's no way to learn all the openings. You'll never do it. You learn a couple, a handful. Play your favorite one. If you watch me play, I always play the same openings all the time. You're better just following the basic opening principles. There's just too many lines. So, you know, control the center, wake up your pieces, get them out of bed. Get your king castled. And you'll find if you do these things you'll be following the openings without even knowing it. Queen to c8 here. Bishop to b2. Pawn to b5. Rook a to c1. b takes c4, b takes c4. Knight b6. And this move, c takes d5, move 14, is the first move unique to this game. And as you look at this, you can see he's got his minor pieces out of bed. White has his minors out of bed. White has his rooks behind the files that he thinks are going to open along with his queen and he's got his king as safe as a baby and it's Betty by snuggled in a blankie sucking on a binky yeah I, I would even go beyond that um, Gil I'd say even 2000 if you're not if you're not an at least well maybe category one player but if you're not at least on your way to expert you, you you're better off working on other things I mean remember you only get 168 hours in a week and you need to budget those hours and if you if you're sleeping the average of eight hours a day well, there's <laughs> 56, window, uh, 60, 56 hours out the window. Now you're down to 100 and, what is that, two? 
Oh, excuse me, I had said 16812. And if you're working a 40 hour week, now you're down to 92. Is that only a 30 hour week? I can't even, you can't even subtract. 72. You're down to 72. And that's not even counting your driving. So, where you spend your time when it comes to chess. I give you the best advice I ever heard, and it came from National Master Bill Richards. Chess Coach Bill, I think, is his Twitch ID. He's also on YouTube, and he's here on chess.com. Um, he runs the group called... Gee. National Mountain NM Coach Bill's free video lessons. NM Coach Dash Bill's free video lessons. And so National Master Bill Richards basically taught me that the time to study the opening is actually after you've played in it. <clears throat> You sit there and memorize umpteen numbers of lines in your limited time. And then you go to a chess tournament hoping to play into that line and your opponent comes up with something totally off that line. Well, what good did it do you to study that line? So, he says the time to start learning that opening is when you're doing your post-game analysis. You take that game home, you rip it open, you rip it apart, you, you do the three R's. You, you record your game, you replay your game, and you review your game. And during the replay, you look it up in ECO and you consider different lines that were played. You see where you first deviated from the book. You see how masters played it in that position. You go through and replay and review, trying to identify your mistakes. Don't let the computer do the work for you. Save the computer for after you've analyzed and then once you've squeezed everything you can out of the position, then run it through the computer and see what you missed. See if your analysis was sound. When I started following that advice from National Master Bill Richards, my rating jumped 200 points in one year. He further says, you want to simply, when you're analyzing your games, is simply go through and identify the mistakes. And the definition of a mistake is a move where you can prove you had a better move. You know, you'll develop your thinking process better if you analyze the games yourself. Because as you're analyzing the games yourself, you are, you are teaching yourself to think. And when you, next time you play, the processes that you followed analyzing your own game, you'll begin to adopt in the actual game. And, you, and you'll start to think, oh, this line, that line. Bill told me when he started doing this technique, that's what really ultimately led him to the master title.
his peak rating was up in the 2300s. Right, working on decision making, that that's, that is working on decision making. Because what you're doing is when you're finding those mistakes, you're also you're also thinking in terms of what what led me oh instead of instead of learning openings yeah when you're analyzing your game though you are working on your decision making because you're evaluating what was I thinking what led me to make that decision what led me to make that wrong decision was it psychological you guys have seen me throw away some good advantages against stronger players several times now in the last three weeks. I'm pretty sure most of the time it was psychological cracking, panicking and, and cracking under the psychological pressure. If you can go back, of course these are just blitz games, you know, uh, when you have over the board game you can stand up and walk away and get a breath of fresh air for a second and, and, and uh, gain your composure and get a drink of water. You don't have that liberty and luxury in a blitz game. But my friend Dagadu Gaikwad, Dag's Chess here on Twitch TV and also on Chess.com with a peak rating of over 2100 and Dagadu told me, gave me this advice I, you're better to lose on time than to blunder away a winning position because you psychologically cracked. Step away from the board and take a breath. Step away from the board, he says, and make sure you're composed. Eventually, you will um, strengthen your mindset and your psychological outlook on the game. Okay, back to this game. And that's another thing, you know, go over these games, especially if you're playing against stronger players. Now, if your budget allows you to pay the extra money that it costs to get into a higher section, one of the things I love about one of the tournaments I play in is it, there are a lot of experts and masters that I get to play. And they, they'll all analyze the game with you and give you advice. And that's worth the entry fee. You know, you could go pay um, a national master $50 an hour or take that as an entry fee into some tournament somewhere most of them will go over the game with you that he, they just played at no charge. It's, it's fairly common courtesy to do a post-mortem on the game. And if they won't, then maybe those aren't the tournaments that you want to be in. But get into a club that has some strong players. All right, so anyway, C takes D5 here in this position. And queen to B3. Knight to C4. That knight's going to be pretty happy on that square. No pawns that can dislodge it. So white says, well, I'll show you how I'm going to dislodge you. I'll... I'll play knight to e5. Rook to b8, getting in line with the queen. Now bishop to a1. Bishop to a6. And queen back to c2. Bishop to a3. Wow, this is nice attack going. Knight 
Rook to b1. Rook takes rook. Queen takes rook. Knight to d7. Pawn to e4. Seems like that was a good move for white. Knight takes knight, pawn takes knight. D4. D4. And why can't he just take it with the rook? Can't he just take that? Is it poisoned? Rook takes bishop here. Yeah, you know. If rook takes bishop to c5. Rook retreats. Is there a sack coming here? Bishop takes f2. And if king takes here, I'm having, let me think here. Let's see, he didn't take it. Chessentials blog now following. The Chessentials, I like that. I like that login name, Chessentials blog. Very clever. Very clever that. Queen c5. Knight takes pawn. Knight takes pawn. Queen c2. Rook d8. Queen a4. So bishop c4, bishop to f1, bishop takes bishop, king takes bishop. He does have a back rank weakness about which he needs to be careful. Bishop b4, king g2. Queen c4. So pawn a3, bishop f8. He's got a passer on the outside. But, I believe black has an attack with some tempo here. KB Khan. Yeah, there we go. Knight to C6. Okay, queen. Interesting. <laughs> Well, can you just take here, though? Thank you for the cheer. Or maybe attack the pinned piece. He does. He attacks the pinned piece. Queen takes. Queen takes. Knight takes queen. Rook takes rook. 
<laughs> so it's a rook and a bishop against a bishop and a knight. And white has two extra pawns. Oh, not anymore, because the bishop's standing there, and the back rank weakness is no longer relevant since white has traded off all of his lateral pieces. With no lateral pieces remaining, the bishop is free. The back rank is no longer a concern. King f3, pawn f6, knight to b5, bishop is captured and he resigned here, only move here, now you got a knight against a rook, but that fork is going to end it. <clears throat> 